so we landed ourselves in a bit of a situation here yeah? quite out of breath digging some sand from a stuck cruiser we made some way so people could pass that came from the front and it was the only place to turn off the problem with the companion is the moment the back of the cruiser starts um, spinning the toe where it reaches to the vehicle touches the ground and it forms an anchor that was basically what i dug up there and let's see if we can get out the rear diff of the cruiser was touching the ground and the tow hitch had completely formed an anchor with the dead weight of the companion we had a lovely gym session in the middle of nowhere, digging the sand from under the hitch and the only way forward was by using all the grunt of the cruiser. The morning we had to pack up was extremely cold, so we started the day with a warm cup of coffee. Then we proceeded to pack up the companion to start the journey to the Botswana side of the park known as Mabua Sehube. The Mabua Nosop Trail is about 170 kilometers long with two campsites, Matopi 1 and Matopi 2, which is around halfway. It is quite an unexplainable sense of feeling when you drive off the main road past the no entry sign towards Mabua. Immediately you get a sense of freedom as soon as you cross the Nosop River. It becomes a two-spur, very loose sand, dusty and corrugated road. So you definitely have to be prepared to travel on roads like these when you plan to visit Mabua. Always ensure to deflate your tires and engage for high, not only to make the road more comfortable but also not to damage the road. So at last we are on the Mabua road, just uh, checking quickly that everything is right on the vehicle. We did the most challenging section according to me already. Um, the most challenging for me is the first part as you cross the Nosop river into Mabua side, the first dune that you tackle. And that is to be considered my famous last words. It was shown very soon after, and in an embarrassing way, that I was wrong. I had to chew up those words and swallow them quite a few times as we continued on the road towards Mabua. These are quite bumpy roads, but we made sure to stop as soon as we lost momentum to not damage the road, and then the only way to get over was for the cruiser to use all the cylinders that it has to offer. As we continued towards Mabua, taking in the never-changing scenery and enjoying the freedom on the two-spur road, 
We can't help but reflect back on the spectacular few days we had on the South African side of the Galagari with some fantastic sightings. A recap of those sightings includes a fair share of leopard sightings, some which made a lasting impression. Some remarkable raptors in the Oyop riverbed. If you go to the Galagari for raptors, then you have to make sure to spend a lot of time in the Oyop. We did not have a lot of lion sightings, but lion sightings is always noteworthy. We also had fantastic next level honey badger sightings. And one of our all-time top-of-the-list sightings was the hunting caracal. We're about 30 kilometers into the road from Nosop to Mabua. Just quickly taking a break to make some breakfast and just stretch the legs a bit. The road is quite bumpy, lots of corrugations and every dune that you go up you have to go very slowly otherwise you bounce to the roof. There's definitely a lot of animals on this road. I've uh, seen a lot of lion spoor, a leopard track as well. We've seen some gemspok and a lot of birds. We are hoping to see some eland. I know they are very very skittish on this road. And just as we started the cruiser and drove off, Zante spotted some eland in the distance, but as mentioned, they do not stay around for long. About 93 kilometers from Nosops, there is this burnt out Prado. It's been here for a couple of years already. I can't recall when we first saw it. And I actually do not know the, the real story behind it. After some extensive research, it seems that the info is still not readily available. All info that can be gathered is that it definitely was a Prado and that the incident happened towards the end of 2015 or beginning of 2016. It is always wise to stop every few kilometers to check the vehicle and to make sure that everything is still in place and that no grass is stuck close to any parts that can get extremely hot, especially the exhaust. We also ensure that our batteries are still tight and all connections to any additional batteries are still intact. Accidents happen when least expected and prevention is better than cure, but also ensure that you do have a decent fire extinguisher which is easily accessible attached to your vehicle. The burnt out Prado is very close to Motopi campsite number one. This campsite is a decent distance from the two-spur road connecting Nosop and Mabua Sehube, but privacy is not guaranteed as we all use it to stop, to stretch the legs and perhaps have an afternoon lunch. The campsite itself is also very large and can easily accommodate a group of visitors, even when towing.
It does not have a shower and you won't find water here, but there is an enclosed long drop. So we have finally arrived here at Mentopi campsite number two. It's been quite a long day's drive. We started off slow, it was our own fault, um, stopped too much. But we are here eventually, um, just around half past two. Now it's time to set up the camp, just a quick overnight stop quickly. So it is a five minute setup. Matopi campsite number two is also a decent distance from the two spur road connecting Nosop and Mabua. But you can still see vehicles when you are camping here, so there is not much privacy. But we have to add that you will not see a lot of vehicles passing. The campsite itself is also very large and can also easily accommodate a group of visitors even when towing. It also does not have a shower and you also will not find water here. And there is also an enclosed long drop just as with campsite number one. It was getting very cold so we had an early night enjoying the stars of an unpolluted sky. The next morning we took a drive to the nearby Mutopi Pen, but without any luck. We then returned to pack up the companion which felt like ages to do, due to the cold weather. hooked um, we cleaned up our campsite and some of the previous visitors mess that they left uh, now we are on our way the scenery from a topi does not change a lot and the road does get very long thus making the sign at Bosobagolo Pen a very welcome sign to see We just arrived um, here at Mabua Seube itself. Um, we are here at Possible Golo Pen. And what a welcoming we got. On our entrance here to Cheetah. They were extremely skittish and we did not manage to get some good footage. The grass is extremely thick here. Um, we just saw the head sticking out. We are just uh, checking out Possible Golo number two. This is our first camp we ever stayed at here at uh, Mabua and it is still one of our favorites. It is just an amazing, amazing view over the pan. It has absolutely no facilities, there isn't even a long drop toilet, uh, no shower, absolutely nothing. It is just a A-frame with a bra area and that's about it. There is no water at Posobogolo, but the view over the pan is just stupendously beautiful. Just a shame that there are visitors that is under the impression that burning your rubbish that contains glass and other items that does not melt away is a good idea. And then just leaving it there as well. We are very amazed with all the activity around this pan. So much wildlife on the pan itself and tracks galore. There's a lot of tracks, cats, antelope, everything on the road. Um, we currently are, we feel we would have just camped at uh, campsite number two, 
but to drive to the gate and change the booking or to ask if there's availability is just very far away now and we don't want to just stay at campsite number two and then there's actually campus that has booked so off we go to Kidding. As you reach Mpaya, the landscape completely changes and the road becomes extremely rocky. Mpaya Pan is one of the most active pans in the park and it is constantly reported that there were some lions in the camps at night. Unfortunately, it is also very expensive to stay at this camp as the pricing has skyrocketed over the last few years. From here we headed to Cutting Pen to set up our campsite for our four night stay. So we finally arrived at Kidding Pan, our billion star accommodation for the next few nights. Must say the pan around here is so far the quietest that we have seen from the three that we have seen, Bosabogolo, Paya and Kidding. We are hoping that there will be some animals coming here during the night. There is some tracks of it seems like hyena. So let's hope that we do find some animals. Now it is time to set up the companion. Kidding campsite number two has very uneven ground, which makes setting up camp very difficult. But it does come with the reward of having the better view over the pan. So we just finished setting up our tent, had something to eat, now it is time to soak in the calmness of guiding pen.
coating one is basically the same as coating two it's about say 100 odd meters away from coating two it is very similar it does have its own long drop within a sheltered house brick house it also has some tables around the camp which you can use or not use it is not the most comfortable to sit on there is a basic enclosed area to have a shower but no bucket so you must bring your own there is also no water at guiding the basic enclosed long drop is also properly secured to ensure the lions stay away. Kiting 1 has a flatter area to set up your camp, but campsite 2 is a bit more elevated with a better view over the pan. Lots of bird life around the pan made for a chilled afternoon in camp. <laughs> 